I'm Wendy Oliston. Um, we're talking about John's experience and confrontation and how we use our own voice for God. So I'm going to share a little bit of my journey with you. God called me very clearly. He told me that he needed my voice. But before I could go forward with that, <clears throat> he had to permit, prepare me for it. And the first step in that was to confront myself. You see, I'm an alcoholic, a recovering alcoholic for nine years now, but still an alcoholic. In the years that I spent being a slave to the bottle, it was awful. I did a lot of things that I'm completely ashamed of that I cannot believe I did. It wasn't who I was born to be, but I did those things. I've always been a Christian, but in those years, I did not behave like one. I have no doubt that my behavior made God feel kind of sad for me. And one day, I looked in the mirror, and I saw who I had become, and I was overcome with grief. And I realized that it was time to take responsibility for all the things that I had been doing in my life. It was time to take action, to change, and stop blaming everybody else for what I was doing. And while I understood that that's what I needed to do, it felt insurmountable. I was in so much pain, and the bottle gripped me so tight, I didn't think there was a way out and I lost my hope. And that night I tried to kill myself. And honestly, I probably should have died that night. But see, God had a different plan. He came to me, and I remember, a lot of that night's a blur, but I remember this. He came to me and he said, you need to get better. I have a very important job for you. So, get better. I had no idea what that meant. I just knew that I believed it. So that's what I did. I went and I started to get better with the help of others. Several years into sobriety, I asked God, where's this job? I'm waiting. But he didn't answer me. So I went on about life. A Couple more years went by and I asked again, where's this job you have for me? And honestly, I started to doubt it a little bit. I thought, well, maybe I heard him wrong or something. But no answer, and a couple more years went by. He made me wait six years. Well, in 2013, I was hit with a creative inspiration like I'd never before. And I sat down at my computer, and I started to type my story of recovery from alcoholism. And it's a full-length book, and it's fictionalized, but it only took me 11 days to write. And when I was done, I felt like God smiled at me and said, so, how do you like your new job, Wendy? Well, I felt completely inadequate, but I pressed on. And as the years have gone by, I've watched him move mountains to get me where I am today. First thing I had to do was learn how to write. Turns out, you need to learn how to write to write a book. He put someone in my life to teach me that. I've now written and released eight books. I have three more that are ready for release, and I continue to write every day. I was approached by a Christian publisher who heard of me through someone else, asked me if I would come on board with them. And that is extremely rare. That was a God thing. I've received hundreds of messages from my readers who say my books have impacted their spiritual lives and given them hope when they didn't feel like hope was possible. I've realized that this is the job he was talking about. I've realized that all of my experiences, all, my, all of the mistakes that I've just been horrified by, well, he's turning them in, into something really good. 
And that's what he does. He takes our junk and he makes it good in some way. All that waiting I did, six years, he needed to mold me in those years for me to be ready. Now let's talk about what I write. It's Christian and it's fiction, but it's not your typical Christian fiction. If you're looking for clean, wholesome entertainment, please do not look me up. You will be very disappointed. I write about the difficult things in life, like addiction, sex, abortion, mental illness, infidelity, molestation, rape, homosexuality, all things that have touched my life in some way. And I do this for a purpose, the purpose of confronting a messed up world. Because of my ability to be subtle in my writing, people who read me usually rarely have a clue what's happening to them inside spiritually as they read. God uses my words to create spiritual conflict and then redirection. But it's so character driven, it happens through the process of watching characters act out what God, what I feel God hopes for us. It's very hard work and it's super scary. I face persecution on a daily basis. But time and time again, God shows me that the people who are lashing out at me are merely reacting to the discomfort that the confrontation has brought. They're upset about the spiritual guided conviction they feel. And let's face it, that's what we do when we're faced with confrontation we don't like. We lash out instead of humbling ourselves. It's amazing to me that he can use me in this way because I truly don't feel like I'm a credible source for anything. I don't feel worthy to speak on his behalf, yet that's what he called me to do. And I'm just going to keep doing it until he says he's done. I'm just a normal girl, a person who has made way more than my share of mistakes. There's nothing special about me other than God made me and he loves me. That's pretty special. So, thank you. If I can use my voice for him, I know that anyone can. And to be honest, all I am is a tool. I'm a tool he uses to speak for him. And I'm hopeful that me sharing this with you will encourage you to embrace whatever voice he has for you.